Welcome to Daily Devo, I'm Pat. Today we're gonna to ask the question, who is this woman? One of the things I love about the Bible is all the little details that point to deep, prof profound truths. Yesterday we celebrated Easter, or the resurrection of Jesus. A and if you were to read the stories about Jesus' resurrection, there are a plethora of little details that are often overlooked or missed, but they have great significance. For example, look at this little gem tucked into this story. It's found in both John and Mark's account, but I want to read the one in Mark. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 says, After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene. Wait, what? What's the significance of this? Why am I getting all excited about this little verse? Did you catch that this is the very first person person Jesus appears to. One of the greatest, if not the greatest events in human history, and of all the people in the world God could choose to first announce it to, he chooses this woman called Mary Magdalene. He doesn't pick the most powerful man in the world at that time. It's not an emperor. It's not a king. It's not a high-ranking official. It's not a leader with great influence. His first appearance is not even to one of the 12 men that he chose to be his disciples and who spent the last three or four years with him almost every moment of every day. Did you get that? Jesus' first appearance after coming back from the dead wasn't even to Peter or James or John, the very men who would lead the early church. It was to a woman named Mary Magdalene. So who was this woman? Well, Mary was a woman that years before Jesus had healed. She had seven demons that Jesus cast out of her. Seven demons. Can you imagine the dignity that she had lost? The, the horrors that she had faced? The embarrassment that she had endured because of these demons haunting and controlling her? And one day, boom, they're gone because of the power of Jesus. Obviously, this radically changed Mary. We actually know that she became a devout follower of Jesus, and over the next few years, she was one who traveled with Jesus and his disciples and even gave financial support for his ministry. But again, I ask, why her? Why does she get to be the first to witness Jesus' resurrection? These questions become even weightier when we recognize that culturally her identity as a woman put her as a second-class citizen. In fact, she wouldn't even have been allowed to be a witness in a trial at that time simply because she was a woman. And yet, of all the people on earth that God could have chosen, he chooses her to be the first to see Jesus. Man, I would have loved to sit across from the table and share a meal with Mary and listen to her tell this story. Wouldn't it have been amazing and fun to see her eyes light up and the smile spread across her face as she replayed the events of seeing Jesus early that Sunday morning? Can you picture her awe and wonder? Isn't it interesting that after his birth, the first people who got to hear about his arrival are a small band of shepherds, a rather insignificant audience. And then when he pulls off one of the biggest surprises ever by coming back from the dead, he once again chooses a rather insignificant audience for his first appearance, a woman named Mary. You know what this little detail, that Mary was the first to see Jesus, you know what that little detail displays? It's a powerful reminder that the least, last, and lost hold a special place in the heart of God. That God deeply, deeply, deeply loves and cares for the least, last, and lost. And if Jesus has such a heart for the least, last, and lost, shouldn't we? In fact, you and me, we're in that audience, the least, last, and lost. As John Newton, the former slave ship captain, wrote in that great hymn, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Maybe next time we get a chance to tell the story of what Jesus did for us, we should have the same look of wonder and awe that most assuredly was on the face of that woman named Mary Magdalene. Because we, like her, are counted in that group of the least, the last, and the lost that God cherishes so much.